creating quests with dungeons uh, is pretty self-explanatory um, based on the menus and everything but let's take a look at how to do it and so you can see how to uh, create unlimited quests for your players and how to navigate the GUI that comes with it. Alright so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead over to our dungeon hub. So let's go into our dungeon hub here. Let's select this guy. This is from our spawn that we set originally. So now that we've teleported to our dungeon hub here that we created earlier, we have our missions dude obviously. Let's go ahead and create another NPC. So this NPC, let's grab a hay bale and let's uh, put it right here. Actually let's put it, yeah this is fine. Actually, no, it's it's not fine. All right, we've set a uh, position for our NPC, for our questing NPC. Let's go ahead and make it so it's uh, facing this way. Make sure when you're spawning in your NPC in your dungeon hub that you go over to slash dungeons edit one, or the, the number of your dungeon, and you're gonna go over to hub settings and make sure spawn mobs is allowed. Now we can go over and do slash dungeons, create, and then we're gonna say quest master. All right, looks like our NPC spawned in successfully, and you can see it has a Quester um, logo on it. We can go ahead and right click him, and now you can see all of our uh, Quest GUI. So let's go ahead and explain what this Quest GUI uh, is really telling us. So we have unavailable quests up here. These are quests that players can go ahead and accept uh, anytime they want if they, are, if they have the given permission for that quest. They have uh, pages, so you can flip through a lot of them if you want up here. We also have ongoing quests in this uh, bottom left hand side where they can go through pages too to go view their ongoing quests that they've accepted from up here. And you have completed quests which are down here, they can go browse uh, whatever quest they've completed. Pretty self explanatory GUI, uh, let's head over to slash quest edit and get started on editing our quests. Now um, to create a quest we just hit that button right there and we can go ahead and edit it. So quests are designated by name. So name is very important with quests. Be sure each quest has a unique name. So let's go ahead and make this name, um, uh, let's say and C and L T N T and 4 and L fun. All right. So now that that quest name has been set, let's go back to quest edit, and now it has that name, that uh, that unique name. Let's go ahead and change the description. So we're gonna say, uh, we have to basically describe to the player what we want them to do to complete the quest. So we're gonna say, and E, turn in, or let's say submit, and then we're gonna do and F, 16, TNT. All right, perfect. So now if we go back to slash quest edit, as you can see, we have a little bit of a description there underneath our name. And uh, yeah, everything's good to go. We can always add um, more description lines, but we really don't need to. But you know what? We can because we need to describe to them what they're going to be getting as a reward. So let's go ahead and add a line and we're going to say and six reward um, description for the reward as you can see it shows up right there and now players can see exactly what the reward is and what they need to do so if we go over to our quester here as you can see it shows up like that it's recommended that you add a permission before you do any of these customizations so that players won't be able to see it up here until you've changed the permission uh, otherwise players can see it and accept it before it's even finished uh, being customized so uh, I'd recommend you go ahead and change the permission for the um, quest uh, so that no one can see it until you're ready for it to be released out to the people. So you can change the permission if you want. Uh, I'm not going to do any permissions for this one. And we can configure the type. Now this is the very important one. This basically designates how the player is able to basically complete the quest. So we have uh, seven different types here. We have give item, join mission, kill entities, break blocks, place blocks, break hives, and break hordes. So these all will trigger um, basically um, a certain amount of times before the quest is completed based on what you configure. So for this one, we're gonna go ahead and uh, have them um, give an item. We can also have them join missions and then we can go ahead and edit the type. So if we right click it, we can go ahead and say how many missions they need to join before the quest is over. For kill entities, 
We do the same thing, we select the mob we'd like them to kill and the amount that they have to kill. And just by left clicking, you can go ahead and select it or you can go ahead and select uh, the give item for our purposes anyway. And we're gonna edit it and it's gonna bring us to this menu here. As you can see, there's no uh, items that we've configured for the give type. Let's go ahead and put in our TNT. So this is what they need to give in order to complete the quest. We're gonna save the items and it uh, looks like we're good to go. If we uh, right click and go back into it, you can see that uh, it appears. So let's go over to our configure rewards and this is what they're gonna earn if they complete the reward or the quest anyway. You can assign commands uh, pretty easily. Uh, we're not gonna assign any commands right now, but you can obviously do that if you'd like. So you can give them money or whatever. Um, let's go ahead over to our items here. Let's add some items. And let's go over and add our beacon, which was the one that we promised them they'd get. And look at that, looks like they get that once the quest is completed. So now we have everything set up basically. We don't have a permission, but we've set the type, we've set the reward, we've set the description, and we set the name. So now when they go ahead and access this inside of the quest GUI, you can also type in slash quest and you can view this as well, but you know, we're going to use the fancy uh, NPC that comes with it. We can see that we have a TNT fun uh, quest here available for us to accept. So we're going to go ahead and click to accept and look at that. It disappears from our unavailable quest and it goes down into our ongoing quest. So you can see here that we have to submit 16 TNT, our reward is one beacon, and it's in progress. So let's click here to submit, and as you can see it gives us a little thing here for us to submit our items. Uh, if we try to submit right now, it says incorrect items, we can right click to view required items, so you can see that we need 16 TNT, and we can always cancel if we want. Uh, if we try to put diamonds in, it's going to say no, if we exit, it's going to give us our item back anyway. Uh, so, let's go ahead and grab some TNT here. We need the exact amount. Let's go into our quests. Let's go ahead and submit our TNT and boom! And there we go. Our quest goes into our completed and we have our beacon in our inventory. Simple as that. We can also configure a different type of quest here. Uh, let's do a kill entities quest just to show you guys a different type um, besides give. So let's go over and to our slash quest edit. And we're gonna go over to our create quest. Let's give it a name. We're gonna call it not a very original name. We should do a little bit more original, but this is gonna be our quest name, kill zombies. All right. And then we have our description. So we're gonna set it to, all right, pretty self-explanatory. So we want them to kill two zombies. And then we can go ahead and add a permission. We should have done that originally, but there's no one on the server, so we don't have to worry about that. And as for configure type, let's go ahead and select our kill entity. Let's right click to customize this. And uh, as you can see, we can go ahead and uh, customize the mob. We can either drop a spawn egg into here and uh, configure that as so. We can set the type to a player, so just a generic player, or we can go ahead and select custom mob to go ahead and slay. So you can do these like, this is uh, hooking into uh, custom mobs um, that you can customize in the plugin as well. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and use regular zombies because I'm a little bit lazy. I don't want to go into a mission right away. You can go ahead and uh, do a custom mob all you want. So let's go over to our slash quest edit. We're going to go over to our kill two zombies. Go over to our type. And let's go ahead and customize our kill entity. Select mob. Plop our zombie in there and now it is a zombie and it is not a custom mob. We have to kill 20, no, we're gonna decrease this down to two because <laughs> we are lazy. All right, and the last thing we have to do is configure the rewards. Let's go ahead and add some items and we're gonna give them 12 iron ingots. We should also add that in the description. So we're gonna say and six reward and F 12 iron ingots. All right, so now if we head over to our quester here, everything should be good to go. It was that simple. We head over to our quester. As you can see, we have a kill zombies, kill two zombies, reward 12 iron ingots. Let's accept that quest. I'll pretend we're a regular player. So we have to kill two zombies. Our progress is zero out of two, and it's in progress, and we get 12 iron ingots as a reward. Let's go ahead and kill some zombies, shall we? So uh, let's go ahead and get a zombie. Uh, spawn egg. Okay, let's kill off some zombies. If we kill off one of them, 
Oh, we even got an iron ingot. How ironic. Okay, so if we go over to slash quests, we can see that our progress is one out of two. Okay. Oh, this guy's dying. Please get completed. Okay, perfect. We kill the second zombie. And if we go over to slash quests, we can see that we have completed the mission. But it's not in our completed yet. We have to go ahead and claim it. So we claim it. We get our iron ingots. And we go ahead and uh, move it to our completed uh, quests area. Quests are very easy to customize here on the Dungeons plugin. If you need any help, be sure to contact me on Discord. But other than that, uh, that is pretty simple. You can go ahead and customize up to seven different types of quests, unlimited quests, and uh, you can just keep on assigning quests uh, depending on uh, how many you want to do as well as permissions and stuff. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys can check out the other videos on the plugin and uh, thanks for watching.